who's the most metal food place we could find? Music <laughs> City Hot Chicken. <laughs> Inspired by the adventures of our nurses, therapists, and techs, A Beer with Atlas is the only healthcare traveling, craft beer drinking podcast. Each week, we'll open a few beers, talk about the brewery and the style of beer, and then dive into some research curated specifically for each episode. In the end, we hope each one sounds like a conversation you'd have with your friends while enjoying a few cold ones. Welcome to a metal episode, ep- episode, episode of A Beer with Atlas. I'm Rich. I'm Brian. I'm Dolan. <laughs> I was almost going to do that. I'm glad I didn't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dolan, why does this not surprise me? That, that actually sounded good coming out of you. He's not practiced. That it didn't He's come practiced that I'm not. Right? <laughs> Look, I was a huge Corey Taylor fan in middle oh, school. Yeah. Slipknot. <laughs> yeah. Yep. 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 Um, and so I, I practiced... Mm. YouTube instructors who teach you how to scream, Jared Dines, you know. Could be one of my favorite. I, who, 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 who is the metal band that does the uh, the disrespect your surroundings? Who is that? You know what I'm talking about? Mm. Disrespect your surroundings. That? I don't know. No, I don't know. I don't oh, know it's all is. over TikTok now. Like people doing stupid stuff. <laughs> and, and that's the metal <laughs> thing. Like, Is that Slipknot? Maybe. It sounds like a Slipknot I thing. Don't know. Could be. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, so courtesy of our very own Dolan, uh, True Brewing is uh, located in Denver, Colorado. He brought us a, a True, I assume it's True, T-R-V-E. Yeah. True. True like, Brewing. Like the band Churches. I right? guess. Wow. They use the V. Yeah. You see that in a lot of metal bands. They they do, I mean, Vs look scarier than Us. For Just sure. saying. Remember the mo- what was the movie Witches? No. Uh-huh. Oh yeah. They had that V mm-hmm. thing happening in there. Yep. Scary. It's called Strange Gateways. It's a black logger. Five point two percent. I don't know. The can is pretty legit. It I mean it's like a creepy zombie or like a Dracula looking hand holding mm-hmm. a candle. Holding a candle. It's got long fingernails. Yeah. They've the had- wax is dripping down. They've had scarier looking labels in there. Yeah. And actually, the most cool looking label, and I gave you each one of these off off air, I'm pretty sure, mm-hmm. is the, uh, uh, it's got the guitar pedal on it, the orange one. Yes. The sour IPA. The sour IPA. Mm-hmm. IPA. Yeah. Which I really, really enjoyed. Yeah. It was oh, it was good. Yeah. It's roasty. Black lager. <laughs> it's our <laughs> morning coffee right Speed here. right up your alley. Hey, look, you spilled. Well, duh. Yeah, duh. Wow. Oh. Oh boy! Jeez. Ooh, Dolan careful. spilled a little. I kind of got on on the Zoom recorder there. It's yeah, a little that's scary. Yeah. That's metal. That's, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and we're saying this because they are a heavy metal brewery. Oh yeah, yeah. And we've talked about these a little bit. We've never actually have we ever done one. I don't think we've actually done a metal brewery before. Mm. We did a metal. Uh, what's the one in Missouri? We did the one in Missouri. I don't know. I can't remember. It's oh, maybe. like metal music, or I guess it was like classic rock. I don't know. Uh, classic metal. We've talked about Three Floyds. Yeah. That's the one I am familiar mm-hmm. with. And then yeah. Cosmic Eye and Lincoln. And Lincoln. Oh, We've well, talked about the, them. Yeah. Yep. And they are, yeah. Which is named after an Iron Maiden song, right? There you I go. mean, that's mm-hmm. so, or Iron Maiden album, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, but the metal here is like death metal or black metal. Yeah, that's what it is or in these places, too. Yeah, because... Mm-hmm. It's not melodic metal. It's not like no. Metallica, quote Mm-mm. unquote. No. This is stuff that's like you have to develop a taste for. Mm. Yeah, um, I'm not. I'm, not uh, I'm. I'm too old. I, I, don't, I don't develop yeah. tastes anymore. Our own uh, um, Ashley Boyce, one yeah. of our brand right. specialists. Yep. Yeah, mm-hmm. she's in one of these bands. Yep. yep. That's very, very, very heavy. Yeah. I, I guess I don't understand it, but they've been around for years. Uh, yeah, these types of bands have been oh, around yeah. for yeah. years, yep. right? I don't. Are we talking like, um, what the death metal of, of of Europe with like people murdering each other in churches and burning stuff down? <laughs> like, Is this the kind of music? Maybe. Nor yeah. Norwegian death. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, so it was is very similar when we were sitting in the brewery. Actually, that's the kind of music they had. I mean, yeah. we were we were there to see uh, my wife's cousin. Mm-hmm. Um, she's a really close friend of ours. Uh, 
you know, she's really close family, but friend too. Sure. And she thought that like, oh, Dolan's into music. I'm He'll just going like to take him. Place. I'm going to take him to this place. <laughs> Does she live in Denver? She lives okay. in Denver. Okay. And um, we uh, we went there and we were drinking beers and having a good time. But like the whole time in the background, it's just. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So right. if that's your jam, then that's your jam. <sighs> Which. I, I'm so, I'm somewhat embarrassed now because I, I later on I want to talk about like my favorite metal bands. Well, we can do that. Well, oh, but yeah. none of those are like okay. this kind of. You metal. might get scoffed at at this Possibly. brewery, but mm-hmm. you know what? That's right. fine. I don't know because a metalhead is is into all different kind. You know, most of the metalheads I know they're they're into your Metallica, and then you're into the, like Cannibal Corpse. Yeah. <laughs> Cannibal corpse, yeah. yeah, corrosion of conformity uh, and tool. Oh and yeah, yeah. There's all sorts mm-hmm. of things. Oh yeah. Yep. There's so many different uh, Iron Maiden, Megadeth flavors of cereal, if you will. I That's guess. True. I yeah. guess. You know, and I, I think maybe some of the most accepting musical people that I've ever been around have been metalheads. Oh yeah, they're the nicest people ever. Yeah, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one of my very good friends. I I've known him since I was 16. His name's Nate Paulson. And he, I would say, is a metalhead. He, he is the one that introduced me to the heaviest music I have ever listened to in my life. I went to all the shows with him, and he's about the nicest guy I know. So that, that seems to jive. You all right there? You take a sip? <laughs> that tastes like a campfire. Yeah. It's, it's dark. <laughs> it is dark. <laughs> but, it's, but really, when you look at it, it's not that dark. No, it's it, less dark than a stout. It maybe looks like, a, like Dolan had said, like a brown, a brown. ale. Maybe like a dark yeah. brown ale. It smells very mm. roasty. It is. It's oh. very roasty. Um, yeah. Mm. Yeah. I'll That's try it. good. Mm. I'll try anything once, but woo. Mm-hmm. I guess. True Brewing. There's not a whole lot on their website. There's a there's there's some pretty cool art. Pretty cool. Yeah, art it looked has... like demons crawling out of hell. Yeah, skeletons. That's what it looked like. Yeah, it sounds like them. Yeah, that's totally. Did you that. write down their slogan? Of course I did. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I wrote it too. I, I all of this. Our goal is to give you a rad place to hang out and drink killer beer since the summer solstice of 2012. So they they don't even say like the month. They're just like, no. They're the summer solstice <laughs> when they it. Yeah. danced around the Maypole or something. I don't know. Uh, our mission has always been to create beers that are beyond the pale. To use this implies new ideas, channeling Loki. Mm. Come on, that's fun. Okay, you're, you're in. Absolutely. And embracing chaos. It means drawing from the sounds and sights that inspire us most in life. Our beers may not, be, may not exactly adhere to any particular guidelines. We're style blasphemers and category agnostics. But you can count on the fact that we'll always brew damn good beer. Yeah. I'm in. Metal. Yeah. I'm in. <laughs> that sounds good. It was so cool, too, because when we were looking at the menu and just looking at the names of the beers, my wife, you know, she's she doesn't listen to metal. At all. If it has growling in it, she hates the song. Ah, yeah. yeah. You know? And so when we were there, and the, they had three or four sours on tap, and they all had, like, really dark names, like, mm. you know, like, Hell's Fingernail. I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But, Satan Piss. <laughs> <laughs> right? Oh. And so she's sitting there, and she's like, I don't know what to order, this, this, or this. And it was just so fun <laughs> watching her say the names and stuff. But, yeah. Kind of like I bought, mm, this has been four years ago or three, uh, a book, a Star Wars book. Okay. And I, my wife was reading it to my son, and she's not a Star Wars person. Yeah. And I was just in the hallway listening to her <laughs> pronounce all the names, and I was just like, this, it was worth the price of the book to hear her talk about Qui-Gon or Qui-Gon and all that stuff. Oh, it was so great. It was so great. Yeah, it was, it was pretty much like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah so as much as I, wow, I'm not, I'm not a super big fan of the beer, but I get what they're going for. And it, it's, it's unique. It may be one of the more unique beers that we've had all year so far. Yeah. I, sure. I wrote down what was on their website for their, it just said beer, heavy metal, Denver. That was it. <laughs> Sweet. That was the description. Good. That seems to jive. Uh, Black Lager, let's get into it because mm-hmm. we haven't really done it before. We've done some adjacent things. Yep. Yeah. Um, lighter in body than a stout or a porter. So we're talking thin if you want to go with mouthfeel terms. Mm-hmm. Um, less depth of flavor. 
in general than a stout. So you're not getting the deeper notes of, of like maybe a chocolate roasted mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. just almost coffee like. It's definitely one note. Yeah. Less fruity, quote unquote, esters or aromatics. So sometimes you will smell um, like stone fruit or that sort of thing mm-hmm. in, in some of those beers, and you're not going to get that with this. No. Um, hops basically just strictly for bitterness in this beer. It's not like an IPA or a pale ale. You're just getting that bitter. Co- if, you, if you're a coffee person, you'll understand that. Um, basically, it's known as a Schwarz beer, right? Mm-hmm. That's what they would call this in Germany. Um, ABV range to be in this category, 4 to 6%. So nothing strong. You're not, you're not even really to a porter category and nope. definitely not to a stout. Nope. Um, this is more in line with like a Bud Light, really, 5.2. 5.2, it's pretty close yeah. to that. Yeah. Um, some versions that we've either had or seen or you can get here in, in Nebraska area, um, Spetzel, Bohemian mm-hmm. Black Lager, which mm-hmm. is a Shiner out of Texas, and then Sam Adams Black Lager as well. Mm. Um, I found this uh, list of rate beer, okay. and it was the top 50 breweries that make a black lager right and i only wrote down the ones we've either talked about or have had beers from on this show okay uh so number 47 so this is out of top 50 we're talking 47 is the sam adams black lager Mm -hmm. which i don't think i've ever had i don't i've seen it but i've never had it um and then we jump all the way to 19 um lagunitas out of california like escondido Uh, they have one called night pills which i've had before and that's real good, real roasty, so very tasty. So like, like Pilsner malts or whatever mm-hmm. in it? Interesting. It's just a, it's like a Pilsner beer, but it's roasted. Whoa. So you know, roasted and toasted. Mm. Uh, New Belgium. We've talked mm-hmm. about them many times. They yeah. have a beer called 1554. Used to only be in a mix pack. I think you can get a sixer of it now. It's I've seen it. It's technically a black lager. Yeah. Hopping Frog. Yeah. Oh, right? yeah. They have one called Guru of the Dark. Okay, Ooh. so that's our friend Thomas Piper, a uh, traveling healthcare professional, lives in Ohio. He could get that for yeah. us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That might be worth that's I may number text 11. Him about that. That's interesting. That's number 11. You said it? Guru from the Dark? Yeah, Guru of the Dark. Guru gonna, of the Dark. I'm going to text him about this. The number 10 is Three Floyds, which we just talked about a little bit ago. Right. Uh, they have one called Das Klein Schwartz Einhorn. Hmm. So whatever the horn uh, of the sm- the smoky sh- beer, I don't know. <laughs> okay. uh, number seven, Great Divide, also oh. out of Denver, I think. Yes, yep. they have one called the Smoothness. Oh, and then number one, this is not one that we've had or talked about, but you've seen um, some of their craft stuff in the store. Mm-hmm. Sprecker. Oh, oh, they have one called the Black. Bar, I think it's called Black huh. Bar or Black Bear. Hmm. It's the number one black lager. Hmm. Hmm. So they are a brewery, technically, but what we usually see is like their root beer and like their craft sodas here in Nebraska. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. If you go to High V, you can get a four pack of Sprecker. Yeah. But they do have a, a black lager and it's number one on rate beers, had the most um, or the highest scores. The, um, Great Divide one had a lot, and Sam Adams had like 800 check-ins. From what Interesting. I can tell. So I've had this one before, and I've had this an, one. a yeah, yep, yeah, this one. And about two and a half hours south uh, west, there is a town called. We did a Taco Tuesday there. It's called uh, Buena Vista. It's spelled like Buena Vista. Yeah. Um, and there's a brewery there called Eddie Line. Mm-hmm. And they make a black lager called Jolly Roger. Mm. And it's got like the skull and the guns and yeah, sure. the yeah. pirate deal. Yeah. The pirate deal. Mm. Yeah. Um, and I like that one better than this one. Interesting. Um, I, I like Eddie Line. I, they have one of the best raspberry beers I've ever had. Yes, they do. Yep. That's mm. that's their legit flagship. Yeah. Holy smokes. Mm-hmm. It's good. <laughs> So you were talking about being at the brewery and the names. Yeah. I wrote down a few of the names that were yes. on here. So oh, yes. you can just get a feel for what we're talking about. And then yep. I wrote down, um, 
I wrote down the names, and I'm going to have you guys guess what kind of beer it okay. goes to. Oh, not oh, the band. That's going to be hard. So, yeah, okay. I don't think you'll get it, but it's oh, just, right. to, just to get the idea of what the names are. Yeah. Uh, Skull Seeker. <laughs> I'm going to... IPA. It's a blonde ale. A blonde. <laughs> get out yeah. of here. <laughs> uh, Deadlights. I, that's that's a porter. Fruit, fruited ale. A uh, half a bison. <laughs> <laughs> Catacombs. Sour. Oh, uh, is that one? That I think that one's a sour. IPA. IPA. Eight oh, percent. Uh, the man. dead lights was four and a half percent. Wow. Um, Suffering soul. This is the last one. <laughs> <laughs> that's a stout. Stout. It's a sour. <laughs> <laughs> and, th- and this sour has ginger, black pepper, grapefruit, and lime. Oh. So you would definitely like that I would that love one. that. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's the kind of names that you get mm-hmm. at this brewery. I think the IPA sour I gave me was called Cursed. Yes, it is. It, yes, yeah. that was it. And it yeah. was fantastic. Yeah. Uh, we talked about this beforehand, uh, <laughs> but the Music City Hot Chicken. Oh. That's, that's who moved into their old space. So they had like... They kind of, from what it sounded like, the article I read, they downsized some of their brewing stuff. Mm-hmm. So they had extra space in their tap room. And they're like, well, what should we do with this? Aha, we have it. Food. We want you guys to come here and eat food. Uh, who's the most metal food place we could find? Music City <laughs> Hot Chicken. <laughs> so they are in the old, some of the old brewery area. It's like been now um, being remade into a kitchen um, in the current tap room. And they are based out of Fort Collins. So this was the second hmm. location for this place. Yep. This is in Denver, right? Yeah. Yep. We're talking it was, okay. it was in Denver. Yep. So I just wrote down a few of the things, the menu items that I saw. Mm. And because uh, I was hungry when I did this research, <laughs> but also it just sounded like something we would all enjoy. Okay. Uh, the brunch menu. They had quite a few things, but one of the things they had was a sandwich. And it was a waffle sandwich. So. You get, you know, fresh mm. made waffles. Mm-hmm. And in the middle of that, you've got a spicy chicken tender. Oh. It comes with a fried egg, bacon, honey butter, and then fireball infused maple syrup. Get oh out of here. And it's poured on the sandwich. Oh. And that's nine fifty. Oh. That sounds like a lot of food. Without a doubt. It sounds great, though. And oh, yeah. yeah. And it's, with, with some of these beers, it would be great. Oh. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I wrote down, like, the lunch and dinner menu was pretty much the same. Just this portion seemed to be a little different. Um, but this sandwich stuck out to me. It was a smoked trout sandwich, which I've never had. Ooh. But I guess they have a smoker in-house there. Oh. Uh, comes with that. Coleslaw. Remoulade? Remoulade? However you say that term. Remoulade. And uh, it comes with a toasted bun. And then they have nine different sauces. So you might like your hot, you know, straight up hot stuff. Or you can have some of these other ones. One of the sauces they have was something called baconaise. <laughs> so I assume it's bacon infused mayonnaise. Yeah. Why and not? then they had French. But then they had this other thing called French. <laughs> okay. So I don't know if that's like fiery ranch. I don't know exactly what French is. Well, you have French dressing, right? Maybe it's that and... Ranch. Maybe ranch. that and ranch. I don't know. Isn't French just Dorothy Lynch? Well, here in Nebraska it is, but... It, it, yeah. Or is there a difference? I don't know. No, no, French dressing's like that. I mean, I, maybe I'm thinking of Russian dressing. Like, Russian is just like ketchup and mayonnaise together. Right? Yeah. I mean, that's, well, that's Dorothy good. Lynch yeah. and French, is it, it falls under the French category, but other places, I guess. if you ordered that, they would be like, what's Dorothy Lynch? They don't know. Oh, okay, yeah. gotcha. Yeah, right. Um, and then they had nine different sides. So you're, you know, kind of like a, almost like a barbecue place, mm-hmm. you know, be, like, potato wedges and that sort of right. stuff but they had something called marinated melon that was one of their sides <laughs> okay. so i'm assuming it's just almost like not fermented but kind of close and that's one of the things you could get there hmm. so they had a uh maybe a warning on the thing i had a, like a hot heat scale like this is if you're this kind of person you can handle this versus this versus this they had some mm-hmm. that went all the way like from nothing to like super hot don't don't even hmm. touch it right. sort of stuff. Right. Uh, and that seems to be, I don't know if it's a fad because it seems to have been around for a few years, but yeah. like hot chicken is definitely something that's in the oh, yeah. lexicon. People are understanding and trying and there's, you know, like the Popeye's chicken sandwich and the chicken sandwich wars that are, we are currently, right. you know, we, we live through barely the cola wars. Barely. Yes. Uh, so now we're in the chicken sandwich wars. I- I actually took the Pepsi challenge when I was a kid. Oh, Remember the Pepsi I, I did challenge? too at East yeah. Park Mall in Lincoln. Yeah. Yeah. 
What'd you pick? What'd you like? Uh, I, I don't recall. I don't yeah, remember. Pepsi's too sweet for me. I think they, it mm. was it was set up, I mean, obviously it was called the Pepsi Challenge. Oh, yeah. I think it was kind of leaning towards Pepsi. Maybe the uh-huh. like one was closer to you. <laughs> like, okay. I, I don't know. You like that one, right? <laughs> yeah. There you go. Sure. Yeah. I mean, it was definitely a marketing gimmick for them, but it's I remember like, doing it. That's like the, the first uh, time I voted. <laughs> yes. <laughs> who, was, who, who was the first person yeah. you voted for? Who was the first president you voted for? Uh, I voted for Dan Quayle. Nice. 2000. Holy cow. Hmm. Holy smokes. I voted for uh, Ross Perot. Oh, yeah. You're That's a little embarrassing. older than me. Yes. Maybe. What, H. What, what, Ross Perot. What was it? Was it uh, Not uh, going to do it. No, what? that was George Bush. No, that was, it was, uh, uh, gosh, it was the Saturday Night Live episode. Yeah, can I Dan speak? Carvey. Dan, can I speak? <laughs> Hello? Can I speak now? Yeah. Yep. Oh, okay, so I, I have a question. Since this place is the, the hot chicken you said mm-hmm. what is it called music city hot chicken music which is city Ch- nashville hot is named mm-hmm. known right. as music city although we are in fort collins and voting okay mm-hmm. so i want you to tell me what is your fried chicken choice i mean okay like let's let's say it's a chicken sandwich right okay let's say it's popeyes versus chick-fil-a versus i don't know what chester's Sure, Is sure. There Chester's around here, right? I, yeah. Okay, if you're in Kansas City, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I've ever told you this story. No. Uh, I went to a concert. It was the no. It was in like '98, '99. So it would have been like Corn, Limp Biscuit, Eminem, oh Ice gosh. Cube. Wow. Do you remember that tour? You maybe mm-hmm. not. The Family Values. Yeah, tour? it was the Family Values oh, tour. Okay. Yes. And I went down to Kansas City. It was in Kemper Arena. Oh gosh. Mm-hmm. And we had to drop off somebody that was in Lincoln and, and they were from Kansas City. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we took him to his house in Kansas City and we went down Prospect Avenue, which oh. is not a great part of okay. Kansas City. Yeah. There was a, ki- a chicken place there called Get Yo Chicken. <laughs> and that was the name of the, of the spot. And okay. it had a line out the door. Uh, and we drove past it, dropped this guy off. We turned around. We're like, maybe we should go get some of that. So we drove back there because we were hungry. Uh, but before we got to the restaurant, there was a guy on the corner with a... What I would consider like a an old West revolver, just walking down the street with a gun in his hand, Whoa. and we're like, nah, we'll just eat at the arena. Yeah. Uh, so get yo chicken, great name. Never tried it. Uh, I would say, or maybe Church's chicken. That's oh pretty good. yeah, Church's, or maybe KFC instead of Chester's. I don't know if Chester's is more a regional thing. I do love some KFC. Uh, Bojangles. Yeah. Bojangles. If you're ever in North Carolina, never had that. Mm. I went to see the Avid Brothers at the Bojangles Arena. Oh. <laughs> and they are they're like a Popeyes but better. Oh really? That's how I would describe Interesting. it. Interesting. But it's only say, in the South. I, huh. You know, I used to be Chick Fil A guy, but I had the Chick Fil A back to back with the Popeyes, and I, I can't get over it. spicy Popeyes chicken sandwich is so good. I I think it, that Popeyes is cheating. They're using the breading from the fried chicken on their mm. chicken sandwich, and that's what makes it so good. Mm, yeah, never had one. Mm. I guess I, I mean cheating is relative. I it's, guess. it's expensive. Anywhere you get, like for oh, some yeah. reason, chicken's expensive. Yeah. I yep. think it's because of the labor mm. involved. Yeah. But the OG is the Wendy spicy chicken sandwich. People I do. always oh, poo poo yeah. that one. That I one's do. always been around. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I have not. Mm, I'll, I'll yeah. tell you what. I'll give McDonald's some props. Their new chicken sandwich that yeah. they have, their new like crunchy chicken sandwich or yeah. whatever, is fantastic. Huh. The uh, Burger King one. They have a classic king chicken or the chicken. Chicken, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. a fried chicken, just like Popeyes or just like yeah. any of those places, and it's it's pretty all right. Yeah, yeah. Hey, more sandwiches the merrier. I guess. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> So I wrote down in the in the theme of metal. Yeah, I wrote down my favorite metal bands. All right. Ooh. So here you we go. Sam and me and Dolan. Will okay, rate you. <laughs> this is this is the OG for me pre Black Album Metallica. Oh okay. geez. Okay. Absolutely. Right. So Ride the Lightning and Kill 'Em All. Yeah. And Justice for All. Mm. Right. That was that okay. was it. I look. They are what they are. They did what they did. That's fine. Yeah. My brother still loves them. He loves every bit of them. He mm-hmm. likes yep. Load and Reload. Oh, me and, too. Yeah. 
Ugh, gross. That's terrible. Uh, S and M. No. Yes. Yeah. Right. And See, Black Album was like what got me into Metallica. <laughs> uh, and the Black Album was the day that came out. There, I can count a couple of days where I was horribly disappointed. Oh, that was one of that was oh maybe my, my first. Gosh. Wow. Maybe my first. And when I saw Batman and Robin, maybe that was mm. <laughs> so, the movie. Yes. Thanks, Michael Bay. Uh, uh, typo negative. Okay. Oh uh, yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, five Finger Death Punch. I know how Dolan feels about this. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I know that name. They're metal. I don't care what you say. They're metal. I like some of their songs. I just don't like th- the image, I guess. The image is weird to me. Hmm. Okay. I don't know what the image is, so... Yeah. so just, I'm just I'll a tough guy, you, you know? <laughs> uh, this goes back with... Uh, my brother is a huge fan of this band, Volbeat. Yep. I like Volbeat mm. I like Volbeat. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I like the singer's voice. Yeah. I just like his voice. And then finally, this I mean, this predates Metallica. Uh, this goes back to like my junior high days. <laughs> Iron Maiden. Oh, yeah. Iron Maiden was mm-hmm. I didn't understand. It was just heavier and weirder than anything mm-hmm. I'd ever heard before, yeah. and so that's what kind of drew me to it. So the first like metal song that I really enjoyed without understanding what metal was or whatever was Run to the Hills. Yes, yeah, yes. That song yeah. was like, oh my gosh, I love the song. Who is this? And- I, well. It has a driving bass line, mm-hmm. which doesn't surprise me that you, yeah, as a bass the player. The drums. I love the drums in it, too. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm, yeah. yeah. Oh. Isn't Those... that guy, he's a pilot, right? <sighs> I'm pretty <laughs> sure he's a pilot. Like, because the band, yeah. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm pretty, really? Yeah. Maybe. I'm, I'm almost positive. It's Bruce Dickinson, right? Mm. That sounds right. I'm pretty sure he's like a legit pilot and used to fly their jet. Oh. Like on tour. He was oh, like the yeah. pilot. Mm-hmm. He would... So, you know, we, in our little genres of what we do, maybe we had a tour, we had a little van, right? <laughs> Mom's Astro minivan. Yeah, we were yeah, driving yeah. from show to show. The Honda Pilot. This maybe. dude <laughs> is flying a jet, his own jet, <laughs> to the shows. I, I seem to remember wow. this. Like, it has the trooper on it uh-huh. with the flag. Yeah. And What's it? They have, the they have uh, Iron Maiden beer. Mm. I, you still see that pop it's up from out time there. to time. Yeah. 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 It's a British brewery, but we should do that sometime. And it just gets here. There's a couple different beers. Man, top five band, top five metal bands off the top of my head yeah. right now. Um, I'd have to say Pierce the Veil. Uh, it's kind of an emo screamo uh, metal okay. band. Okay. So they call it uh, post punk or post hardcore punk, maybe. Mm. Um, and then uh, Dance Gavin Dance. I'm a huge fan of those guys. Never heard. Mean oh, have you heard of gosh, no. no. Okay. To listen to some dance, Gavin Dance. Okay. Uh System of a Down is always going to be yeah. top five yeah. for I me. Love system. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um that I was dude is huge, unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. Surge. Uh, Surge. Yeah. Surge. He he has a solo project out there that's really, really good. Hmm. Um <sighs> corn. I was a huge corn fan. Corn, yeah. I intentionally left corn off the list because it's just it, I mean Dude, yeah. those first two, oh. like Adidas album, and like, mm. yeah, yeah. Mm. Follow the leader. Come on, those were great. <laughs> I, those were great. My first one was was uh, the Untouchables. Okay, oh, yeah. and I loved that album. Hmm. Loved it. And then I'd have to say my fifth favorite is an instrumental metal band. Whoa, uh, they're called Polyphia, mm. and it's just a lot of like. I, and see, I don't know. I go back and forth. Like, Polyphia or Tool, they're kind of both the same. Just one instrumental and one is, uh, you know, it's got vocals and stuff. Maynard. As, as far yeah. as I'm concerned, Tool is a category all to its own. Yeah, it's pretty. It's yeah. It's a subcategory of metal, though. I, I I'd guess. Say, you yeah. know? Anything, anything that Maynard's in is, yeah. Yeah. Yes. I, I like. I'll just say a couple that we haven't mentioned. But okay. I'm a huge Coheed and Cambria fan. Yes. Okay. I do yeah. love them. Like, yeah. It's almost like science fiction <laughs> rock, but I really yeah. enjoy that. Like that dude's voice is amazing. Mm-hmm. And his hair, Claudio's hair is amazing. Like I wish I had hair like that. <laughs> so cool. Um, they say, you know, Black Sabbath. Yeah. Sure. I'm old, yeah. so I grew up with that. And like Deep Purple, that was like mm-hmm. the original heavy you know like a lot of bass <laughs> right maybe right. you have a five string or even a six string bass you know sliding mm-hmm. in some of those songs um i i wasn't a metallica person really and probably until uh, one that song and yeah. then a little bit after that i liked it a lot sure. 
Um, I think that's probably that's probably where I go. I, I, There's yeah. one that kind of deserves maybe an honorable mention. Hailstorm. I really Hailstorm's great. Female led vocals on and and I really I really enjoyed them. Yeah. Now th- it, that's a polarizing one too. Yeah, I mean, I don't even know if. Like, Hailstorm is kind of on the lighter side of metal, probably. Yeah. 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 But, I mean, uh, honorable mentions, if we're going to talk about those, uh, Megadeth. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. How about Mindless Self-Indulgence? You know them? No. MSI? I've heard of them. No. I haven't really That's ever crazy stuff. dove into them. Um, You're talking about... Underground Red-Handed Denial? That's really good. Mm. Really Some good. Some good band names here. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. I, got, I got to tell you, I don't think Dave Mustaine is talented at all. I can't put Megadeth on my list mm. at all. No, wow. Not one. Wow. You, you got kicked out of Metallica for a reason. <laughs> but it's an attitude reason, right? I, I, don't, I don't know if it's a talent reason. Mm, mm. I don't know. <laughs> That's a whole different podcast. <laughs> Personal <apparently>. opinion. <laughs> wow. All right. Well, here's what I did a little bit of research on, because uh, I wanted to, I wanted to go dark and heavy mm-hmm. and death, but not tunes. Okay. And one of the beer names inspired me, and it was the Deadlights. Mm. You know where that's from? No. Oh. Stephen King. Really? Oh. So, I'll I'll just write down my little synopsis that I have. I'll read it to you. The true form of it slash Pennywise is the Deadlights. So if you've have you seen the recent movies? Yes. No. Okay. I yes. haven't even I haven't yes. seen it at all. All right. Well, when the, the first one or the remake? Neither one. When of them. Pennywise opens his mouth fully, mm-hmm. and you look into his mouth, mm-hmm. there's these three rotating lights inside his throat, and hmm. they're going around and around. Those are the dead lights. So that's a thing that Stephen King has used in a, a few different uh, versions, different stories that he has, uh, but basically. It's alien-esque. You can't comprehend it. A human mind can't understand what these things are, and it basically just blows your brain. You're just done. You're like you're out, and uh, then he eats you or whatever. Sure. So that's something. When I saw that name on the beer, I was like, "Oh, okay, yeah, I'm going to do that." Um, they say in the movie, "I'll talk to you" because you've seen it. Mm-hmm. He has that spider kind of body. Mm-hmm. That's the closest the human brain can comprehend the deadlights to what he actually looks like. Oh, wow, okay. So that's without going insane, without yeah. losing your mind, that's as close as you can get to what the deadlights are. Which is still really spooky. I mean, yes. Uh, um, then there are, in the book series, I guess there's that one. So there's It, then the movies, the adaptations that he did. Mm-hmm. Um, there's three people that have ever looked into the deadlights and survived. One of them, is Audra Denbro, which is Bill's wife, which is only the book. That's not in the movie. You never mm-hmm. see her. Right. Uh, Richie Tozier, mm-hmm. Beep Beep Richie, and Beverly Marsh. So oh. the most current one, she's like floating in the air, right? Yes. And she's like just dead, and they have to pull her down. That's because she looked into the deadlights, and her brain was just was just wiped out. Um, there is a song called Deadlights. It's hmm. uh, from the soundtrack, of, so it's like a score. Mm-hmm. Uh, Benjamin Wallfish is the guy who did that. The Deadlights also show up in the Dark Tower series. I don't mm. know if you ever read that. Did you ever read that? I did, yes. So the Crimson King, that's kind of like mm. a villain or whatever in, in this series. Mm-hmm. He goes, without getting too much into it, he goes up and down these levels. And when he does that, he's using the Deadlights to get from one place to the other. Um, King Crimson is a band, metal band as well. So yeah. flip on that. And then... Um, he has a new book, Stephen King, just came out in March. It's called Later. And this uh, comes up in, in that story as well. There's a tie back to Derry, um, the ritual they call it of Chud. So in the m- recent movie, they all have to like join hands. And it's in the book too, where they mm-hmm. have to like basically stare the deadlights down and show that they're not afraid and, right. and kick it to the curb, so to speak. And that thing happens again in this newest book that he has which is totally unrelated it's almost like a cop who done it <laughs> sort of book but it still ties back to his interest like world of of this sort of thing so the deadlights is a a scary name i was since i read that in the 80s that stuck with me 
And then when I saw that beer name, I was like, oh, yeah, we're oh. going to get into little little Stephen King where we haven't talked about it before. Hmm. So that's that's we, what I got. Did you enjoy Stephen King when you were younger? Like, did you yeah. read those books? Yes. Like, right. I don't know why my dad let me, but he let me check out Pet Cemetery when I was oh, way too young. Yeah. So like 1988, let's yeah. try 10. It's the first time I really ever saw swearing. Mm. And I, I remember reading it on summer vacation because I got it at the Bennett Martin downtown library in Lincoln okay. and read it. And then I just started reading Stephen King. And do you remember in the eighties you could get the subscription? You could buy like the hardback. It was on TV. It was a like commercial and he would send no. you, you could, it was like a monthly deal, almost like a record club, but it was his books. Really? And they would come to you hardback. Uh, one of my mom's friends, her husband had like all of them on the shelf. And I was just like, Whoa, Whoa. now I have almost all of them on paperback. Hmm. I don't hardly have any, hardback ones a couple of the more new ones i do but okay yeah i've read yeah almost everything he's he's done Dolan, do you ever stephen king at all anything no uh anything horror or scary like that and i look the other way mm. yeah interesting Inter- yeah very yeah mm. i i the one of the first one i remember reading was it uh and then i went back and i i read pet cemetery i watched pet cemetery mm-hmm. with uh uh what grandpa munster yeah was that it was Herman. Uh, Herman Munster. Yeah. That's who it was. Herman. Yeah. Uh, one of the worst ways possibly to die when, when he was under the bed. And, and they sliced him. Oh, Achilles. And, yeah. Oh, man. Uh, yeah. Oh, that cage. I went back and, watched, and read Pet Cemetery and then Christine and Cujo. Uh, oh, yeah. So if you're a huge fan of It, like I was, like mm-hmm. that was my favorite for a long time, um, he had uh, a book that came out 1962, I think it's called. It was like... He went back in time, basically, to save Kennedy. Have you ever heard oh, of this or seen right. it? that's right. Yes. There's a huge section about he ends up going back the first time to, like, see how it works. He goes back to Derry at the time of Pennywise showing up the first time. So you get to see some of those characters in a whole different... Wow. It's not their story. It's another guy reporting on what's happening in this mm-hmm. town to these kids and... And uh, the thing that lives in the sewer or whatever. But wow, interesting. It's kind of fun how he ties everything together. Hmm. I, my only, my only, only complaint with him is sometimes he does. Sometimes a lot of the times he doesn't know how to end a book and end a story. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Like he's got great ideas and the story is fantastic, and then it ends. You're like, oh god, that was it. Like I, I read 800 pages for this. For that. Yeah. Mm, yeah, but I, I still really enjoyed him as a writer. So. Me too. Yeah. And he loves, loves, loves music. Mm-hmm. Old music, new music. He's always talking about music. It's always quoted in his books. You'll get anything from like 50s pop and R&B stuff to current musical like references in his things. It's mm-hmm. pretty cool. No smoke inside my eyes. No sustains on your roads. No sustains to take us cuts. No pressure starts to fall. I want you to do it. Uh, TripAdvisor, four out of five reviews, or four out of five on 19 reviews. So not bad. Oh, okay. Four out of five? On 19. uh, Fantastic. This was the one I clipped out. Fantastic. Our second time here was just awesome as before. If you like heavy metal, if you like heavy metal and dark satanic-ish shit, then this (laughs) is your place. Blaring metal, good clean beers, tasty sours, and creepy pictures are what to expect. Cool merch with creepy designs and beers to... To go really help the experience, I will come back every time I'm in Denver. Hmm. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. Yeah, like I almost wanted to be like maybe offended in a way that oh. that Sam's cousin was like, "Oh, this is Dolan spot." Because uh. I was like, <laughs> I was like, "Man, what kind of vibe do I put yeah. off?" You know, dark. Metal, but then at the same time, I was super appreciative and super super like excited to be there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just because the whole vibe. So, and... were you like the most square dude there? No, no, okay. no. I no. Would, I would be my worry is like I roll up and I don't have a cool jacket with those big back <laughs> like <laughs> patches and stuff, black and white stuff. I no, know. honestly, it looked like. Uh, I mean, it, it almost seemed like they're. I don't want to say like hipster, but that's kind of the vibe I got. Mm. 
Yeah. I, I guess it was Denver still. Yeah. yeah. I could I, I could see that. I almost get that out of Cosmic Eye sometimes there in Lincoln. Mm-hmm. Hipster is the wrong word, but just yeah. like welcoming and cool and different. Yeah. And yeah. Cosmic Eye is so weird because you go in there and it was an old laser tag place and they mm. left the floor <laughs> and they have a place for kids to do crafts and yeah. they have food trucks and they're super nice, but then the music is just... Yeah. Heavy, heavy. Yeah. But I mean, the ambiance, like the ambiance there, like really fits the the music. I mean, I bet. yeah, because that's how it was at, at Three Floyds too. Mm. You go there and the, like the lighting in there is like just candles on the wall, you know, <laughs> like this <laughs> candle in this guy's hand on the can. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it was like really. I mean, it was in the middle of the day, and there was hardly any sunlight except for the front because it was window glass door, you mm-hmm. know, glass windows, whatever in the front. But the rest of the brewery was just like. Oh man, there's a sacrifice that's gonna happen awesome. later. We're yeah, all back ha- room, yeah. We're yeah. all hanging out here drinking beer, and then we're gonna go and you know yep. meet over this lamb that's being <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but they have a special release beer that goes along with yeah, that. Yeah, that's fine. So it'd be totally yeah, fine. Yeah. All right, Untapped sixty-seven reviews. That's it. That is it. Not much. Wow. No. Um. I mean, they had wow. all different styles and of beer on their website that mm-hmm. I saw. Maybe it's new. It could. It could be. I was gonna say there was a, quite a bit of these in the, in the uh, the cooler or whatever you know, mm. that you could buy. You know, you don't. You don't buy this on accident. No, you know what I mean, for the most no. part, I feel like it's gonna be highly ranked. I'm gonna say it's four point one eight. I'm gonna go three eight three. Four point zero seven, mm-hmm. yeah. um, over four. Yeah, I, you're right. You seek this out. Yeah, you, you want this. You, I mean, when you see the label and you see what kind of beer it is, mm-hmm. you're kind of gonna know right away if you want it or not. Right. I I, I I would want it. I wrote down two roasty. I think there's only been two beers that we've ever had that where I wrote. And there was another. I can't remember which one. We it actually was. did a mm-hmm. smoked beer. Yeah. And that one was pretty roasty. Okay, so three <laughs> beers I think we've yeah. done. I, I mean, I, this is close to being yeah. like bitter, Oof. smoky bitterness, mm-hmm. but it doesn't have that smoky flavor. It just has that real roasted, roasted. to the bottom of the mm-hmm. coffee pot yep. flavor. Which I should like. I don't know. I yeah, just, I that's know. how you like coffee. Yeah. I, that's exactly how I like coffee. Maybe it's because <laughs> cold. Oh, that could be it. Maybe that's what it is. Yeah. Maybe. All right, fellas, we're not going anywhere for a while. May the Schwartz be with you. Thank you for listening to A Beer with Atlas. Special thanks to our brand team for producing the show. Each episode of A Beer with Atlas is powered by Atlas Medstaff, an industry leader in travel healthcare staffing.